What's up guys, and welcome to the 10th anniversary special of Old School RuneScape. That's right, this game right here is 10 years old already. Okay, well, technically it's actually more like 20 plus years old, but 10 years ago today, Jagex, the company who develops this due to popular demand, re-released the fan favorite version from around 2007 and named it Old School RuneScape. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a little fun tale the devs added in in an anniversary update that follows the origin story of an interesting gentleman that would go on to do great things. Our story starts as you hear word that a new chef has decided to take on the assistant role in the kitchen of Lumbridge Castle and you decide to go introduce yourself. Her name is Patty Sear and she tells you that she travels all over the world to learn more about cultures and their unique cooking styles. You can't help but notice however that she seems a bit distraught when talking to you. Upon asking what's wrong, she tells you that she got invited to enter a brand new baking competition called the Great Gelinor Cake Off held at the city of Falador, but that her prized baking tin she was going to use to make her entry has broken in too. It's then that the head chef of Lumbridge who is listening in nearby chimes in, saying he has an idea on how to help. He tells you both that the local axe salesman Bob knows a thing or two about repairing metalwork, and that this Bob still owes him a favor from a long time ago. He generously offers up his favor if it'll help Patty be able to enter the competition. After all, if she wins, Lumbridge will be renowned far and wide in the baking scene. Bob's shop is just outside of the Lumbridge castle, so it takes no time at all to pop over. When you get there, you greet Bob and explain the predicament to him. After seeing the tin, he thinks for a moment and tells you that he can fix it, but it's outside of his usual wheelhouse and that he's going to have to charge a lot for it. Luckily for you, however, you have an ace up your sleeve in the form of the IOU the head cook gave you. When you bring this up to Bob, he looks a bit defeated and says that he was kind of hoping the cook forgot about that, but eventually agrees to repair the tin for free. You return to Patty and happily hand her the fixed tin, for which she thanks you excitedly. Sadly though, it seems she's become burdened with yet another dire problem she seems even more upset about than the first. Patty explains that her lucky chef's hat that she used for years when cooking has somehow been stolen by a local goblin, and she begs for your help once more in returning it. While not fully appreciating your new role as the Lumberj errand boy, you still agree to help because she asks so nicely, and because you might get some cake. Patty says that a goblin matching the description has been seen by a large fire near the general store just outside of the castle. After a short walk, you arrive on the scene to see what hilariously looks like a little green goblin proudly strutting around in his chef's hat. He introduces himself as Warm Hands and explains that he's a new culinary master on the scene ready to cook delicious meals. He says that he's been watching the head chef for years now, studying everything he does so that he can become a chef just like him. You brush him off and explain that you just need Patty's lucky hat back that he's stolen. Warm Hands stops you however and tells you that he can't do that as a hat like this is needed to be an official chef like him. To part with it now would mean the end of his livelihood in his eyes. After mulling over your predicament, you come up with a solution that might lead to both Patty and Warm Hands being happy in the end. You tell Warm Hands that he should come back to the kitchen with you, and in exchange, he can talk to Patty and that she can help him become a real cook like he wants. Warm Hands is reluctant at first, but once you explain Patty's travels and her possible interest in the goblin culinary arts, he agrees and walks over with you. Arriving back at the kitchen, Patty instantly confronts Warm Hands. Upon learning his story, however, she feels some sympathy and offers to let him keep the hat, even telling him that it's in fact a lucky charm of sorts, which he seems to like. Afterwards, she lets him know that she needs to make a cake for the upcoming competition, and since he's supposedly a chef, she offers to let him collaborate on the project. The two get to work whisking, cracking, flipping switches, and talking shop, until finally a masterpiece of a cake is created before your eyes. Patty and Warm Hands congratulate each other for their fantastic work and then ask you if you could deliver it to the competition to enter it for them, to which of course you agree. You arrive just in time to the cake off and head over to Party Pete the host to enter the masterpiece. After answering a few questions on the cake and informing Pete that Warm Hands, the goblin who just showed up, is no threat, but in fact the chef, he accepts your entry and prepares to begin judging. Before that however, he asks you if you could help him solve a small issue. See, Pete hired a wizard to create an everlasting candle display that's supposed to be the topping to a decorative centerpiece during the broadcast. This wizard can't seem to get the candle lit though, and Pete wonders if you could combine efforts and help him accomplish that. You agree, but upon talking to the wizard, learn that he seemingly tried every last spell and trick in an attempt to light the candle to no avail. The only possible idea he has is to somehow get dragon fire powerful enough to light this magic candle. You both agree that clearly that's kind of an absurd ask for the staff of a cake baking competition, however, and you decide to head back to Pete to tell him the bad news. 
While explaining your failure, Pete mentions to you that he did invite a specific dragon to enter the competition, but it seems that it's a no-show at this point. You find this a little disturbing, but clear your head and move on when Pete asks you to check each of the contestants' cakes to make sure they're ready for the event to start. One by one, you make your way through the competitors, asking about their entries and inspecting them for any issues. First of these competitors is Thurgo the Dwarf, whose cake looks suspiciously like a pie. Upon questioning, he confirms that it is, in fact, a red berry pie, which happens to be a specialty of his. You shrug and assume this must be some kind of pie-cake hybrid or something. Next in line are two goblin generals, who after bickering about what color the cake should have been, inform you proudly of their entry. You take a look at it, and it seems to look like a basic chocolate cake, but has a strange smell about it that you can't quite place. You figure it's probably fine, and marvel at the fact that the two managed to work together long enough to make it in the first place. On to the next contestant, who happens to be the king of the neighboring lands of all people. He begins boasting about his hard work and labors while making the cake, but adds slyly that he may have accidentally let it sit in the oven for far too long. When looking at his work, you can clearly tell it seems burnt to a crisp, but he assures you that his entry is just as valid as anyone else's. Finally, we get to our last contestant, who appears to be a small gnome child of sorts. This kid tells you that he's reinvented the entire idea of cake, and instead of soft, he's made them crunchy and in bite-sized fashion. Not knowing what to make of this, you simply pat him on the back and assure him that his entry is, uh, definitely something. Well, you've inspected each of the entries, and all that's left now is to start the show. You decide to take a seat and tune into the magically produced broadcast to see how it turns out. Out comes Pete, welcoming everybody to the first inaugural Great Gillinor Cake Off. He starts off making his way to Thurgo the Dwarf's entry, and is stunned when he sees that it's a pie. Confused, he decides to take a bite anyway, and while he decides that it's delicious, he marks it down for the fact that it literally isn't a cake. Next, he moves on to the Goblin Generals, and upon seeing their cake, is delighted at the idea that it will be filled with chocolatey goodness. Worry racks his face when he tastes it, however, as it has a peculiar flavor that he can't quite put his finger on. The generals happily butt in to clarify that the secret flavor that Pete's tasting is in fact mud. Spitting the cake out, Pete decides it's time to move onwards. Before he could manage though, the building begins to shake and loud flapping noises signal that something big is coming, and fast. Stunned, everyone looks to the door to see the dragon. Pete yells for his staff to cut the feed and for everyone to take cover. The dragon blasts at the contestants with a ball of fire so hot that it could burn through steel, but luckily he misses everyone and decides to fly off afterwards. Dusting himself off, Pete motions for the feed to be resumed and declares that with that dramatic turn of events, the contest will have to be cut off early. In shock, you head over to Pete and ask what just happened. He reminds you that he indeed invited the dragon, but he says that he did so for them to bring a cake and not to try and kill everyone. He still considers it showing up to be a positive, however, as it managed to light the everlasting candle. Still slightly disappointed at the early conclusion of the event, you ask Pete what's to come of the results. He says that it's kind of throwaway as the last two contestants either burned their entry or just brought cookies instead. You remind him that the representatives of Lumbridge brought a cake that still needs to be looked at though. He agrees and carefully takes a bite, intensely studying all of its intricacies. He then reveals that it's delicious and that it in fact is the winner of the competition after all. You rush to Warm Hands to give him the good news, and after all the effort, he asks you if this means that he's a real chef now. You tell him that not only is he a real chef, but one of the best and award winning now. He congratulates both of you and urges Warm Hands to continue his culinary pursuits as he's one of the brightest sounds he's seen in a long time. And at that friends, we end our lovely 10th anniversary tale. I hope you all enjoyed learning the story of the lovable up-and-coming cook Warm Hands and his often misguided but honorable ideas of what it means to be a chef. RuneScape is such a quirky and weird game, and I love to come back to it every now and then to appreciate all of its glory. There are so many funny and unique stories to be told in the world, and exploring it is always a joy for me, and hopefully you guys too. My next game review will be coming soon as well by the way, but I hope this can keep you entertained until then. Anyways, thanks again and see you guys next time.